Okay, hello everyone, and I am Jamin, and welcome to the AI seminar. And it's also my thesis presentation, and I'm going to talk about my thesis project, consistent emphatic temporal difference learning. And if you have any quick clarification question, feel free to interrupt me. And you can also save your question to the end of the talk. And I want to give you a warning first that this talk will focus more on intuition rather than technical details. So let's get started. And to warm up, I want to give you a high level description of the problem we study, online off policy policy evaluation, in short OPPE. And here is a agent environment interaction diagram where the agent send actions to the environment and then it will receive state and reward from the environment. And the goal of the agent, now the behavior of the agent will be decided by a policy mule. And its goal is to evaluate a different policy that we call the target policy pie. Off policy evaluation is also called off policy prediction. And next I will give you an example how natural agents doing off policy prediction and then to motivate the problem a little bit. Imagine a skier at a new ski resort. They may want to ski fast, but they are unsure about the trail condition, so they cannot ski fast. Instead, they may first choose to ski slowly for the first run so that they can predict what is likely to happen if they instead ski fast. Now, this is an example showing how off policy prediction is helpful for agents to evaluate policy that is not safe to perform because they don't know what value they would get. By the way, this is my collaborator, Yiwan at Mama Vincent. <laughs> I think he make a really cool turn. <laughs> Now, other than in the case when the target policy is not safe to uh, be executed, OPP is also an important problem in reinforcement learning. And specifically, online OPP is an essential component of IO agents that do learn general value functions, learn options, and use these option models to plan. Now, these are all advanced topic in reinforcement learning. And they, are, they have high potential to enable the agent to learn continually in the real world. And online OPP is an upstream of this topic. Thus, it is important to develop efficient algorithms for online OPP. And this is the problem setting that we will focus on this talk. Now, I think some people uh, having some pizza here, and I may expect they may want something to take away immediately. Now, I just want to let you know that in this uh, talk, we will identify a gap in the online OPP literature that there is no consistent TD algorithm that is practical. Yep, question. What is consistent? I will define it in a minute. Yeah, consistent. Yeah, I just explain a little bit later. And then we will fill the gap and we find that a new consistent algorithm that we call consistent emphatic TD. And this algorithm is going to be consistent and offer a smooth bias variance trade-off that allow it to be more practical. And we show its superiority and practicality in a didactic example and then a complex task. Now I'll get into consistent in a minute And here is the outline of the talk. Correspondingly, we will first identify the gap, and then we will fill the gap with the two strategy, and arriving at our algorithm consistent emphatic TD. And finally, I will cover some empirical evidence. Let's get into the first part. But before I define consistent, I want to go over the problem setting first so that I can define consistency. 
So online OPPE built on top of online policy evaluation, which is simpler. In this case, the agent will execute action from the target policy pie, and then it will receive the next state and reward from the environment. Now, in online policy evaluation, the agent will execute the target policy and evaluate the value of that policy. And the value is defined as the discounted value function, which is the cumulated discounted return. And in OPP, the agent is cons constrained to use a different policy for interacting with the environment. And we put this constraint on the red box here that the agent's action is not going to draw from the target policy pie. Instead, it will come from the behavior policy mu. Now, the goal would still be estimate the value function of the target policy pie. Now, there are many ways the agent can represent the value function, and we choose to use linear function approximation to approximate the value v pi. Specifically, the value v uh, at the state s is approximated by the feature at state s multiplied by the parameter theta. And then the goal of the agent is to update that theta to obtain better estimation of the value function v pi. And here I show a general update of updating the theta. Now, next we will review some literature that per performed uh, update to the parameter theta. The simplest algorithm to solve online OPP is off policy TD, and it makes the following update. <coughs> here, phi is phi t is this is the same as the state feature at state st. And rho t is the important sampling ratio, which is the probability of taking action a t to the uh, divided by that probability under the behavior policy. Now, important sampling ratio can correct the probability of selecting action such that the agent can consider the action are taking under the target policy. And for those who are familiar with TD learning, this update is the simple form that use uh, the one-step target, the RT plus gamma phi T plus one theta. And in general, we can have multi-step update, but we will focus on this simple one-step case. And how does our policy perform? And to understand this algorithm, I want to first give you some uh, general uh, concept that we can use to understand the behavior of the algorithm. For a TD algorithm, a key to understand the behavior of the algorithm is its fixed point. For an algorithm with fixed point, which is given by A inverse multiplied B vector, its A matrix is going to decide is stability. And stability is an important concept that it, it implies that the algorithm can guarantee to converge. And secondly, if the algorithm converge, we may wonder what solution can it converge to? And this quality is evaluated by the fixed point. And specifically, we use the root mean square value error which is the distance between the value function given by this theta to the true value function theta, uh, v pi. Now, how does off policy TD perform and what is its fixed point? Specifically, the fixed point of off policy TD is showed on the slide, but it's not important for you to understand what it is. Let's skip a little bit this math, but I'm going to tell you off policy TD and its 
a matrix are uh, stable. What does it mean? It means that of policy TD, the red curve here, why it, in some case, it can gradually diverge. It should, in the end, diverge to infinity. On the other hand, a stable algorithm should behave like the blue curve here. And the blue curve here is a stable method that I will introduce later. Now, this is an example of how off policy DD is stable. Apart from the stability, off policy DD have another issue. Even if off policy DD converge, it will tend to induce large error. And a result from Coulter shows that the error can be arbitrarily large, which is pretty bad. Now, given these two issues, unstability and inducing large error. On policy T, on the other hand, does not have this issue. And on policy TD here, I just mean the data comes from the target policy instead of the behavior policy. Now, if the data comes from the target policy, we can see it has a different fixed point. And the difference is that this D matrix that you don't need to understand, but you can see the difference here. The D matrix is transformed from the behavior policy to the target policy. And this will result in on policy TD will have different property regarding to stability and the error of it. Now, off policy TD is unstable. On policy TD can be guaranteed to be stable. In addition, on policy TD will have well-bounded error by approximating the value function. This means the agent can find more accurate estimate of the value function v pi. And given these nice properties of on policy TD and its fixed point, we want our off policy TD algorithm to have the same fixed point as on policy TD that we call on policy fixed point. Yep, question? Yeah, question. So, for, so in the few slides before, when we talked about the RM, RM, RMB, the B pi, do we assume B pi to be linearly realizable for any pi? Well, I repeat the question. Yeah, the question is, uh, does we B pi here, does we pi here on the slide depends on realizability or not, right? Uh, to answer this question, we do not make assumption on the representability of the feature. So if, the, uh, if it is linear realizable, this error theoretically can be reduced to zero. Otherwise, it will have a minimum error. Yep. I assume the environment is stationary? Yes, the environment is stationary in this simple study. Yeah. Sorry, another question. So like, when you talk about approximation errors, the approximation errors not only coming from the algorithm itself, having a different fixed point, but also the approximation from realizability, right? Yes, the question is that the error of the algorithm would come from two parts. One part is how good the feature represents the value. And the other part is how good is the algorithm it is to find this the best theta. Yes. Any question? And let's move on. So we've just talked about on policy fixed point is a ideal fixed point that we want to have. And as we defined off policy TD to be converge, uh, to be consistent algorithm if it has the same fixed point as on policy TD. And that answered Shiban's question about the consistency of off policy TD algorithm. And this is the definition. And such algorithm will have the benefits that they will be stable, that it's likely we can show they can converge, and that they have a low theoretical error. And the focus of this study is to develop consistent off policy TD algorithm. Now, what are the ways to, yeah, question. Function just of the point or of the algorithm as well. Like, for example, 
you mentioned that if if the algorithm reaches the on policy fixed point, it's good because the error is well bounded there, and it's also good because it's it's a stable fixed point. So is the stability independent of the algorithm update updates or uh, or is it just a function of the point itself? So each algorithm will have a corresponding fixed point. And the stability will be decided by the property of the fixed point. Thus, the algorithm will have the same fixed point, uh, property as that fixed point. Like, if a fixed point can be shown to be stable, the algorithm should be stable. That's not necessarily true. Right? The algorithm might take forever to get to the fixed point, that it might diverge. Yes, and the fixed point will decide whether the algorithm would diverge or not. But on the other hand, if the fixed point is stable, the algorithm would not diverge. Like, you may not get to the fixed point, but it would not diverge. Okay. I guess my, answer, my question is a little simpler, that uh, the on-policy fixed point is some point, right? Something that uh, in the, or the linear space of features, it's like one point. Um, and this point is, can be defined irrespective of the algorithm, right? Like it's just some A inverse B where the A comes from the on policy algorithm. Now, when you say that it is also a fixed point of the off policy algorithm, um, then it can again be called A inverse B where the A comes from the on policy algorithm, right? So does the off policy update not affect the stability? Like if you reach there and you make some off policy updates, could you not go away? Like in what sense is it <coughs> stable? Well, the algorithm itself would have the same A matrix or B vector. That is, can be derived by its own update. Right. It's independent of uh, whether the fixed point is the same fixed point as other algorithm. And then this fixed point will decide its behavior. Right. And the behavior here is it would not diverge. But to show it converge to the fixed point, we need um, extra kind of like analysis to show that. So you're going to, uh, so your algorithm will have the same k, and which is why the uh, fixed point will be the same, and hence we also be stable. Okay. Right. Yep. Thanks. So we shall move on, and uh, our goal is to develop consistent of policy TD algorithm, and there are many ways to do that, but most of them will come from the idea that they reweight the update with the density ratio, which is the stationary distribution, uh, stationary probability under the uh, target policy divided by the behavior policy. And if we reweight the TD, of policy TD update with this density ratio, we can see that the fixed point is literally brought back to the on policy case. And this is an intuitive idea of like, if you would reweight the update, we can have the on policy fixed point. However, in reality, we don't have access to this density ratio. Thus, in the literature, uh, different work will use different prox proxy to the density ratio. And the first class of the method, they use a density ratio estimation. And specifically, they will represent the density ratio with the feature. Thus, to, for them to be consistent, they require the feature can exactly represent the density ratio, which is a very limited assumption. Thus, we will focus on another uh, type of method that they use important sampling ratio to reweight the update. And they don't require restrictive assumption on the uh, feature representation phi. And we will focus on this type of method. And there are two main methods in this class. One is full ISTD and the other one is ETD. We will look at them in order. Yes. B pi here is the stationary distribution. Yes. Any question uh, specifically regarding to uh, literature and, okay, sounds good. Then I'll go to 
the first uh, and the only existing consistent algorithm, full ISTD. Specifically, it used the full IS ratio product as a proxy to the density ratio. And this product is the important sampling ratio from row zero all the way up to row t minus one. And by reweighting this FT, we can show that full ISTD is stable and consistent. However, it also pay a price. The price here is that it suffers from the high variance of the FT, which is a bunch of a bunch of the important sampling ratio multiplied together. And this variance issue caused uh, full ISTD to be impractical. To address the variance issue, ETD used a different trace that called follow-on trace FT to reweight the update. And with this FT, ETD can be shown to be stable, but it also introduced extra bias. Now I'm going to use a very simple example to illustrate the unsatisfying of these two algorithms. And we will use a simple two-stage MDP. And here is the learning curve of full ISTD. And I, remind, I want to remind you that full ISTD is consistent, but is, has high variance. And it can not learn at all in the two-stage task. By, by this, I mean is, it is impractical. And theoretically, it should converge to the on policy fixed point, but it does not. On the other hand, ETD is a reduced variance, but it also introduced bias. Specifically, it converges to a fixed point that induces a larger error in this environment. And thus, theoretically, it can never reach, uh, it can never break through the top dash line. And our ideal case should be, we should converge to the dash line on the bottom. So the question is, what is A1, A2? Sorry for the typo on the slide. A1 should be uh, going to the left. A2 should be going to the right. Yes, they are the feature representation of the task, but it's not important to uh, discuss the detail of it, but to just give you some intuition how this algorithm are not satisfying. And our goal is to find a switch spot between the two algorithms. One is full ISCD, yes? We're just running, not running enough for the whole ISTD to not, you know, fluctuate at all. It looks like it's a pretty flat line, so I'm just like curious. Yeah, it's not a problem of how many steps. Uh, the problem is, is the problem of full ISTD uh, that we have not run enough for it to converge. Theoretically, it could be the case, but I suspect it can never converge to the fixed point, and there are currently no result of it. But Empirically, we can observe that the full IS ratio product will uh, diminish to zero, which means it will not update theta. And it will just keep the theta forever, and its learning curve will stay flat. And our goal is to find a, find a sweet spot between the two algorithms. On the one hand, full ISTD is consistent, but high variance and not practical. And on the other hand, ETD has low variance, but it's, it is biased. We want to find a switch spot that the algorithm is consistent, but have lower variance so that we can achieve the on policy fixed point. Specifically, we can find an algorithm that can get us closer to the bottom dash line. And here is the gap that we identify in the literature. 
next I will fill the gaps. But before that, this is a good point to stop and understand what's the problem here. Any question regarding to this? Sorry, uh, could you repeat? Uh, the audience uh, raised the question that whether can we truncate the important sampling ratio to reduce variance. There are some empirical work that does this trick, but it is not a principled way to develop algorithm. And I choose not to uh, go to that direction. Yes, that, that is true. Uh, not necessary. If the bias is persistent, then it will converge to a different fixed point. The policy being run here is mu. That it will go to. Yes, pi is it's not matter like which one is the best, but one of them will go to the left state, the other one will go to the other state. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes, but we we does not concern optimality of the policy in the example. Yeah. Thanks. And next, I'm going to field the gap that we just identified and arriving at our algorithm CETD. Specifically, we will fill the gap with two strategies. The first one is we use transient bias to reduce the variance while we are still able to retain consistency. And the second strategy is we unify algorithm to attain a smooth bias variance trade-off so that we does we not just find a point between the gap. We fill the gap continuously with tunable parameter. And before we do that, let's recap what existing algorithm does. And they can be represented with the same update, but use a different trace FT. Now, this trace FT may hinder us from understanding what it actually does. Does I show in this table and I analyze the coefficient of the different IS ratio product that FT gives to each ratio. On the left hand side of the table at the bottom is those one row T minus one and to the last one on the bottom is the full ISS ratio product. And specifically, we can look at the first method first. Full ISCD, it will give all the coefficient to the full IS ratio product on the bottom. And on the other hand, ETD, if we unfold its follow on trace, we can see that it uses a geometrically decayed trace to assign the coefficient. Specifically, the IS ratio product on the top will receive higher coefficient and the is ratio at the bottom will receive a smaller coefficient and if we if we put more weight on the top on the table to the extreme we can arrive at off policy dd which will just use a constant trace ft now the intuition here is if more weights are put on the bottom the algorithm will have lower bias and higher variance. And full ISCD is the extreme that put all the way on the bottom. And contrary, if we put more weight on the top, the algorithm is going to have higher bias and lower variance. And ETD and off policy are example of this. Now, what could be the potential switch spot between Full ISCD and ETD. Yeah, 
uh, Abhishek proposed using equal weight. And we just proposed this simple uniform weighting. And we assigned uh, equal weighting to each full ISTD, uh, full IS ratio product. And we, the resulting trace looked like this. And we call this trace the average follow on trace. Now, this trace, it has non zero coefficient assigned to the IS ratio product on the top, which means it will introduce bias compared to full ISTD. However, since we use equal weight here, we can see as t goes to infinity, the weight is going to diminish to zero. Thus, we can show that this new trace bias can fade away. Specifically, we can show that its expectation is going to converge to the density ratio. Now, this is good because density ratio is the things that we are looking for. And if we await the update with this FT, we call the algorithm average emphatic TD. And specifically, we can show that AETD is consistent. And I provide this result in Ethereum 1.1. Now, this is, this is the first strategy that we use transient bias to lower the variance of the full IS ratio product. And we still are um, able to obtain consistency. And this is the first strategy that we use. Next, we will unify AETD with other algorithms, show that we can fill the gap continuously. And AETD will just be a point uh, in the gap. Oh, yeah, good question. Uh, the question is, what is transient bias? And transient bias means the bias is impersistent. That means it will gradually uh, goes away and degrade to zero. Because the, if, if you remember, the weight that it gives to the IS ratio product on the top is one over t plus one. When t is small, this weight can be big. But when t goes to infinity, this will just go to zero. The, yeah, the fixed point of AETD is the on policy fixed point. Is it when the tension peaks or always? Uh, it's only when the fixed point is defined as the asymptotic property of the algorithm. Thus, it is the case when t goes to infinity. But it will decide whether the algorithm is stable or not, even if it has some bias at the beginning. Before we go into the second strategy, are there any question? Sounds good. Now, we first see an example how a existing algorithm used this same strategy, but on different methods. Specifically, ETD beta is the algorithm that unify several existing algorithms. And this is the... Uh, some, the concept of ETD beta. And specifically, when beta equal one, it becomes full ISTD. I use quoted becomes because it is not exactly recovering full ISTD, but a conceptual connection. And when beta equal gamma, it becomes ETD. And when beta equals zero, it becomes off policy TD. Now, a question is, AETD is a point that outside this line, can we unify AETD with this existing algorithm? Specifically, we want to get the interpolation between AETD and this algorithm illustrated in the triangle here. And we propose a unified trace FT that we call general foreign trace to do this. It's not important to understand like what this trait is, but to know that 
it has two parameters that allow it to choose between different methods. And specifically, on the bottom right corner, I showed the uh, value of this two uh, hyperparameter. When beta equals zero and nu equal one, the trace become AETD trace, which is the bottom right corner. And when nu equals zero, the trace becomes scale ETD beta stray, which is the left edge of the square. Now, scale ETD is a slight variant of ETD. It is just weight the update with a constant, which could be observed in the step size. That's, it has the same property as ETD. And correspondingly, they can recover scale ETD and off policy ETD. And when beta equal one, this trace become full ISTD. Thus, using the general Fourier trace, we unified the existing algorithm using this square. And we call the resulting algorithm general emphatic TD. And this is its landscape. Now, what do we get out of this unification? And does it achieve our goal? Specifically, for this square, we already know the property of the top edge and the left edge, which are existing algorithm. And we are interested in the remaining square when we exclude the left edge and the top edge, but include the right edge and the bottom edge. And specifically, we found that this square is consistent the same as AETD. And we re refer to this part of the square as CETD, our final algorithm. And we showed it is consistent with a theorem. Now, this is a, a good point to, to pause. And if you have any question regarding to CETD and its relations to uh, existing method, you can uh, ask me. Sorry? What are mild conditions? The mild conditions will just be one uh, one condition is the feature should guarantee the A matrix to be invertible. And the second condition, we just constrained the behavior policy such that important sampling ratio is well defined so that you don't get one divided by zero or something like that. And the other uh, condition is the behavior policy should have a cover. Oh, yeah, the condition which I just mentioned. Yep, so this condition are all common con uh, assumption on OPPA. So we're assuming there's linear relationships with the, like, the matrix itself based on the fact that it's a linear situation. Right, yeah, it's a very common assumption uh, when we use linear function approximation to guarantee that, yes. You mean why the world is not linear? Yes. The world, the world isn't linear. Does this still do something interesting and reasonable, or is it just uh, moving along? Or has anyone shown that linear is a good approximation to many of these situations? That's an interesting question. I think in general, uh, nonlinear function approximation is needed. But linear function approximation is a kind of first step towards this uh, full function approximation. Yes. And yeah, question. Um, can you go back to the landscape? So, did you know that on the pink edge, uh, <clears throat> those class of algorithms are biased, right? Yes. And that is with uh, eta equal to zero? Yes. And e beta. And so, so even if eta is like 0. 0.00001, it's consistent? Like, that's what this result is saying, right? Yeah, uh, here the result, the question is when each, I, I call it new, and when new equal point zero 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 one, which is a little bit off the dash line, we can show that it is consistent. That's different. New is kind of 
trade off. Like, um, I guess like at the end you proved it by asymptotically that's the case. But I sort of like intuition that what new closer to zero it takes longer, but new closer to one is shorter. Yeah, this is a good question. The question is, when new change, what is going to change? And specifically, we can, I showed the square with a gradient field, which represent the darkness of the pixel, represent how much variance it will suffer. And the darker it is, it will have higher variance. Specifically, when new is larger or beta is larger, it's going to have higher variance. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, and the result is if you have high variance, it may take longer to converge because it has high variance. Yeah, I mean, yes. You have one minute left to finish. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, I've. I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> no worry. I'm, I'm quickly. Go over some empirical evidence show that the method we just arrived consistent emphatic TD. It is practical. That is the point I want to make in the last few minutes. And specifically, we will use three instances of CETD: the diagonal line and the bottom line and the right edge. These algorithms, they are easy to tune because they have only one decay parameter. And they revealed inside about a square because they have a, a good coverage of the square. Now, the agenda of empirical evaluation, we will focus on the first two questions and a little bit touching on the third question on the limitation of CETD. Now, let's get into the first question. Now, we already seen this uh, learning plot curve. And I added off policy TD here. And we can see that it actually converged to solution with large bias. And if we plot the learning curve of CETD, we can see that it successfully break through the second, uh, the top dash line and get us more closer to the on policy fixed point. <laughs> And thus we have shown that CETD is indeed the sweet spot that we are looking for. Okay, yeah, quick question. Yes, theoretically, it, we have not shown the convergence, but I suspect that is the case. Yes, yeah. So, but when you say consistent, that means the- it, it has the same fixed point as on policy D, but to show it actually converge to it, we need uh, actual theoretical analysis, which we have not done yet, okay. and an interesting future work. And next, we will focus on a second question. How does CETD perform on more complex tasks? And we use this room task, which has 104 states, and it consists of four subtasks, each correspond to a target policy. And the behavior policy will just choose random action. Now, this task, uh, I just want to remind you that it has high variance. But I'm, I don't have enough time to tell you the details of it, but let's believe me. And specifically, let's look at the baseline's performance on this task too. Our policy D converged to solution with large bias, and full ISTD cannot learn at all, the same story. And ETD that use gamma equal 0.9, the same as the task. And ETD beta, it, use, it choose the best beta over uh, a set of potential beta. And we can see these two methods converge to uh, comparably to a relatively low error. And CETD, they, they converge to the same solution, but they converge faster than existing algorithm. Now, in this task, CETD does not converge to the, a lower error. This is potentially due to the high variance that it, it 
it affects the uh, learnability of the algorithm. Just a quick reminder to the yes. The two curves which are learning faster, they correspond to the bottom inside edge, right? Not the right edge. The two curves that learn faster. Like two and three. Yes. In fact, uh, the remaining the remaining uh, algorithm also converge to similarly faster. We can see the one on the left, the first one, CTD1. It I I showed the learning curve when beta varies and the line with uh, some blue color is the line that we just showed in previous plot. But with some other uh, beta, it can actually learn faster, which is the same as two other uh, CTD instances. On the other hand, CTD, uh, on the other hand, ETD converge much slower and has higher error when beta is small. Now, before I wrap up, I want to give you a caveat a caveat that CTD still suffer from the variance issue. We can see here the same uh, learning plots I just show you. Uh, the result here is average over the middle 15 seat. And if we average over all 30 seat, we can see that the performance of CTD degrades a lot. This is because high variance induce some outlying seat with very poor performance. And this is an indication of how this method still suffer from high variance. Now, I quickly wrap up the contribution in the empirical evaluation that we show CETD achieve lower error in a two-state task. It converge faster in the room task. And the caveat is that it still suffer from high variance. Now, there are a lot of future work for this project. One is to reduce CTD's variance by truncating the trace FT. And this will effectively reduce the variance, but this is not truncating the important sampling ratio. For interested uh, audience, you can come to me, we can discuss this further. And we can, an interesting direction is to analyze CETD's convergence and sample complexity and to evaluate it more comprehensively in broader context. And know that we have not studied the optimality of the fixed point. It would be an important direction to understand it. Now, finally, I want to uh, thank all my collaborator, Feng Di, Yi Wan, and Rupam. They are great researcher, and without their support, this work would not have been possible. And I would like to thank you, all the audience, uh, listen to my talk, and I am happy to take any question from you, including your follow-up questions. Yep. Question. On policy fixed point could be a gold standard, yeah. But it's not like in the optimal sense, but a good standard. Uh, the gold standard is a future work <laughs> that <laughs> we have not studied, but an interesting direction, an important direction, yes. Uh, what would happen when parameter change? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Increasing. The question is, what would happen when uh, parameter new or parameter beta change? One change is that when you increase these two parameter, it will have higher variance, but consequently, it will have lower variance. But for CETD, the bias, the bias will gradually decay, but that decay will become slower when you, uh, when you reduce the parameter. Like 
on the top left, on the bottom left corner, CETD is going to have bias that persists longer, but will also gradually uh, goes to zero. On the top right corner, it will have higher variance, lower bias, and it may behave more like full ISTD. Yep. So is this uh, variant uh, something that you empirically observed, or is it more based on what you know about the theory of the average? The gradient field here, or the private here, is a intuitive uh, understand in intuition from this table that how we assign the coefficient to each IS ratio product. And we have not performed variance analysis, but we empirically observe the same okay. result. So do, you, do you see that when you choose parameters in the lower left side, where there is low variance, but the bias will persist for longer, does that does it, it still have like the outlier issues that you were mentioning uh, towards the end? The question is, does the question is, wait, let me get to the slides first. The question is, does the uh, more persistent bias help the algorithm to be uh, resistant to high variant issue? And we can see from this plot on the right uh, hand side, when beta is small, it actually does not have a large performance degree. And when beta is large, which means it will have higher variance, that in this, this line, when beta is large, it will have a larger performance degree. And that is a very good observation. Thanks. Yep, thanks for a good question. Yeah. For, for this task, what's the um, policy TD? Uh, so, yeah, the, quick, the question is, what is the on policy fixed points error here? And I want to remind you that the room task uses a uh, complex linear like pie coding. We have not like analytically calculated the fixed point. Thus, we use on policy TD with tabular representation. I run it for extended amount of like step and use that as the value function to calculate the error. Thus, we don't know uh, the on policy fixed points error because the error is obtained from like the tabular representation. Yeah. Okay. I think I Again. have, yeah. yeah. Any question, maybe if you have one more quick, I can answer one more. Yeah, you leave for defense. Yes, I will leave for my defense now. So the, the, uh, in the error, the states are weighted by their on policy distribution. The error. Yeah, so it's the root mean squared value error, right? So I will have many states. So it's the distribution over the states, the on policy distribution. Right? Yes, on policy distribution instead of off policy distribution. Right. Okay, I thank you everyone to join my talk. And I will have some, I don't know, Danny, uh, do I have some one on one meeting later that people can register? Okay, yeah, you can Slack me, uh, we can chat. Okay, uh, I go to my defense now. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>